Today I'm kicking the tires on a new 3D scanner. This is the Creality Raptor. And I'm excited about 3D scanning here on the channel because it'll let me take some physical objects and put them into CAD to design different projects around, whether that be brackets, fixtures, interfacing parts, and things like that. Now the Raptor itself is unique because it has two different scanning technologies built into the same unit. As far as I know, it's the only consumer level scanner that has blue light laser scanning and this gives a higher level of detail and accuracy. So while this is at the very top end of the price range for consumer level scanners, as far as I know, it's the least expensive blue light laser scanner. Now, in addition to that, it has an infrared scanner built into it also so that you can have a more traditional scan. You need a little bit less preparation in a lot of cases. And while you lose some detail, you can still get the general geometry put into CAD for whatever you want to do. Now, in full disclosure, they did send this out to me to be able to use for this video and also for projects on the channel. The Raptor is packaged in a good quality hard case. It uh, feels really durable and inside there are custom cut foam inserts with a place for everything. Now the unit itself feels well made and I really like that the controls are easy to access here on the back. So you have one to start and stop your scan and then some other controls to change exposure and zoom on the fly as you're scanning. The connection is all in one cable, which is really nice. So you have both data and power going through this cable and it has some screws to hold it in place. This connects right to a power supply at the end as well as the USB on the computer. So with it connected, you can reach underneath that and there's a second layer with some accessories. There's a scanning mat, you have a calibration plate as well as some targets. Uh, these you use to stick on to things when you're using the blue light mode to keep track of where you are. So I'm starting off with a calibration technique here and it walks you through the whole thing in the software. It's pretty straightforward. You just start by moving the scanner straight up away from the plate and then you repeat that at some different angles and it uh, does the rest for you right inside the software and keeps track of where you're at. So with it calibrated, it's ready to go. Now the reason that you buy the Raptor is for that blue light laser scanning and the promise of that higher level of detail and accuracy. So let's test it out on several different examples. Now I used some scanning spray here. On the other metallic models that I used, I didn't use any and they seem to work okay, but I wanted to prep this one pretty well. So this basically gives it a matte finish just with some powder. And these little markers, I 3D printed and put the stick on markers around them. On the bottom of them is a magnet so that I can stick them right onto metallic things and have some reusable ones. And I just put them around these smaller objects when I scanned them. I added some additional markers on top and then set the resolution. And that's really all there is to it to get scanning. Now the scanning took a little bit of time to get the hang of. It wasn't completely straightforward. I mean, it was straightforward. It wasn't complicated. But just holding the right distance and moving at the right speed and not throwing off your angles uh, took a little bit of trying. Now, there were a few uh, tracking errors that popped up from time to time. And in the blue light mode with the markers, they were hardly an interruption at all because it would just correct so fast that I didn't need to do anything about it. I didn't really need to wait for it. But uh, this is the result that I got. There's some extra data I can just delete here uh, before I process this. So um, once I delete all that, then there's a one click button to create the mesh. And I didn't change the mesh settings once and the one click button worked really well. So I thought that was a pretty good feature. Um, the detail on this is really good, especially, you know, where I had good access up top. And so this gives me something I can refer to. I'm gonna see here how hard it is to export this and then bring it into Fusion 360. And it was pretty effortless to bring it in there. Now here in Fusion, I can uh, measure it. This is kind of a rough measurement technique. I got uh, three inches, 951 thousandths, which is seven more than my caliper measurements. But both of those are pretty rough techniques. So two hairs away is not too bad. Now I'm using this uh, same chuck set up with the markers to try and measure a cylindrical object. So I have an end mill put in here and I sprayed this one as well. 
and you can see the geometry picked up really well back in those curves which i thought was pretty impressive it does have a little bit of a rough edge which might be from the scan spray or maybe that's just the nature of it this is a one two three block and i didn't spray it at all uh, for prep i just put the markers on and it is going really smoothly. I just wanted something that I had a real known size on so that I could measure it in uh, the software. It's pretty neat to see how well it picked up down inside those holes, and I just needed to approach it from a bunch of different angles. Now, you can see that I did continue to run into some tracking uh, errors on it, but they did self-correct almost instantly on blue light mode. On the infrared mode we'll look at in a little bit, that was a little uh, more time-consuming when those errors would pop up. On the blue light mode, I pretty much kept going. But if you look at the detail, you can see those threads, you can see just the cylindrical holes, and that means I could use this to pick up interfacing parts. There's a little... Uh, piece right here that's proud from the marker but the actual dimension checked right on three inches and right here it checked three thou shy of two inches so i mean pretty pretty good results uh, from that now this is a rocker arm from a pentastar engine and i'm going to scan this just because it has a lot of small detail and see what i get now this is pretty uh, straightforward just back and forth over it once again i'm run it so you can see the little red blips of the tracking errors that came up but the better I got at it the fewer there were and so there's some amount of skill to it and once again this wasn't sprayed or coated in any way and it's pretty interesting you can see the texture on the paper towel that it was sitting on even so uh, yeah I don't know I thought that was pretty neat but uh, after trimming away that data this is the final result and it's definitely has enough detail you could reverse engineer things and you can see even some of those little dirt specs showed up here in the model and so not uh, not too bad a result now i'm going to scan the other side here also so i flipped it over and i'm just using those markers on the outside no other prep at all and i found that to work really well so so i don't know that the scan spray really did a whole lot with the blue light mode probably be more helpful with the infrared mode but uh, i tried the infrared mode on just rough models we'll see in a minute so here's the bottom side once again really good detail getting up inside there definitely enough that you could uh, come up with a mating part or fixture or something like that off of this uh, scan model now there's a tool in there to actually piece the different sides together the automatic version didn't work for me um, so there's one where you can pick points and the issue that I had is I didn't have exact points to pick So I could have used a center punch to make a little mark before I scanned and I think that would have let me line them up better But here I didn't get it uh, just right since I was just roughly picking those points So it worked generally, but it wasn't uh, right in the right uh, position for me So anyway a little bit more work needed on that now I'm going to try this for an actual uh, reverse engineering application. So when I remove my chuck off my lathe, I put a board there so I didn't damage the ways, and then I have three little cam locks that I have to loosen, but I need to support the chuck with my hand, and it would be nice to have something else to support it as I remove the chuck from the spindle. So I want to make a little support here that can slide on the ways, but measuring the ways, the spacing there, the diameter and position of the chuck, you could do it, but it'd be a big hassle, and it'd sure be nice to just put this right into CAD. So I've set this up with markers for the blue light scan, and I'm working my way through this. Now this is a little bit more difficult geometry, and so I ran into more tracking issues here than I did on the other examples. Um, but I still made my way through it. So that's the, the biggest recommendation I'd have for this is just whatever can be done to improve that tracking. But either way, it pieces itself together. I didn't have to stop or go back or anything like that. Um, I just made my way through it and trimmed off some of the excess data. So I just get the region of interest. And honestly, that's where I'm going to use it most is just getting a particular region. And this is after the one click automatic processing. This is the model that I have pretty clean right there. We'll see how accurate it is when I design a part and try to fit it. So I've put it here in Fusion 360 and just used that geometry directly to solid model this. I didn't measure anything with any kind of gauges. And here it is after 3D printing. It took about two hours to print and this is ready to go. So I dropped it right there under the chuck. That way, when I remove the cam locks, it just sits right on there. 
and then I can slide this whole thing out and it's supported without relying on my hand to keep it in place and I can slide it right back in. So this came out really good and this is really the power of using 3D scanning to get geometry that might be otherwise complex to measure and uh, put it in and model parts right off of it. Definitely uh, worked in this case. Let's try out the infrared scanning in a few examples and see how that works without using those same tracking markers. So this has several different modes on the infrared. It includes a face and body mode. And while I'm not too into the figurines or body scans, I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick selfie and see how that face mode works. Scanning myself was a little bit more difficult than I thought just to move in the right direction. I think it would have been easier if I had somebody else do this and I would have gotten more data out of it. But uh, either way, there's definitely a striking resemblance there. I'm not sure how I feel about that. All right, well, that face scan's pretty fun. I'm not looking to move into the metaverse. I'm happy right here where I am. So I'm just gonna move on from that one and let's try out some examples that are a little bit more relevant to the type of engineering that I'd like to do. So I wanna try infrared mode with no prep on this mill vise here and see if I can't get a model. Now, I'm not gonna be able to access the whole thing because I don't wanna square it back up. So I'm just gonna look at the one side and see what I can't pick up. And on large flat surfaces or where there aren't a lot of features, notice how the skin kind of slid off to the side and I ended up with basically two vices. I can stop and there's an undo button. And I thought that was really nice that once I could see things weren't going exactly right on a particular scan, I could just click undo until it was back to normal and then it would pick up where it left off pretty easily. It didn't have a lot of trouble uh, finding the tracking again after that. Um, once again, you know, it, it did lose tracking. You had to wait a minute before it uh, would find it again. Not a whole minute, but a few seconds and then you could carry on. And this is the finished model and it's pretty good. Definitely usable um, even though I have half of it. And so you can scan just a region of something that you need. So I'm gonna scan the housing on this pressure washer here, and I think this would be pretty representative of you know trying to figure out a volume that you might need under a hood with some parts. So this one's gonna move into the medium size, and I'm gonna use geometry tracking first, and then I'll go over it with texture tracking. So here it's filling in pretty good from the top, but once I start tilting to the sides to try to get a little bit more data off of the side of the housing, that's where I started running into some tracking errors. And you can see, I'll just speed this up. It's a little disorienting to watch, but just so you can see the occurrence of those tracking errors right there. Um, it's still picking it up and it finds its way back, but it does create a little bit of a delay every time that happens. So I think this uh, probably could be improved a little bit uh, in the software, but here's the final result. And the missing section on the black, well, that's, that's a difficult color to get. So with some scan spray, I think I would have gotten that and the detail is definitely something that's usable. But I want to just try it again as is with texture mode and see if I can get a better result just scanning something pretty quickly without prep if I just need a rough model uh, for, for anything that I'm working on. So here it's scanning a lot better with texture mode and the actual uh, tracking errors were basically eliminated. So there's definitely something to the mode that you pick and the result is much better too. It's completely filled in on that black portion. Uh, there's not as much of an issue around those buttons, so pretty good. At the end of the day, what do I think of the Creality Raptor? Well, it did its job. I ended up with functional, usable digital models um, from actual physical objects. And, and that's what I was looking for. In the blue light laser mode, the detail and accuracy was really next level for a consumer scanner from my limited experience with them. Now in the near infrared mode, the hardware is obviously capable of picking up where the parts are. However, the tracking in the software was not the best that I've seen. It would lose its place a little more often than others I've used. But if you moved back into position, it did pick up its place pretty well. And you do have that undo button, which is a lifesaver. So you can just back up a little bit and keep going. So if I were to make a recommendation to Creality, it would be keep working on that software and try to find ways to improve that tracking even more. The other recommendation that I'd make to Creality on this is kind of a silly one, but it would be pretty helpful to have a couple extra feet on the cord so you're not tethered quite as much when you're scanning larger objects. So as this sits today, hardware and software, I would say it is a useful tool if you're able to take the time to really learn to use it, learn the different applications, prep your surfaces, things like that. 
And so I can see myself using this for a number of different projects coming up on the channel. Um, thanks a ton for tuning in. Always appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.